Hi there, welcome to this video about computer memory. In computer, memory stores data as a series of electrical charges. Each charge represents a single bit, which is the smallest unit of information in a computer. A bit can be either 0 or 1. In computer memory used to store the data, the basic building block of a memory chip is a cell, a tiny circuit with a capacitor, which stores data as a charge and one or more transistors used to activate the data. The capacitor is either charged or discharged, corresponding to the two possible data values, one or zero, where the smallest unit of data is known as a bit. In this diagram, address line also known as word line, which used to signal the transistor to close or open. Transistor acts as a switch to close when voltage applied in address line or open when no voltage applied in address line. During the write operation, a voltage is applied on the bit line and a signal applied to the address line to close the transistor. Then the voltage applied on the bit line will transfer to capacitor and store in the capacitor. When the reading operation, the address line is selected, the transistor turns on and the charge stored on the capacitor is fled out onto a bit line and to sense amplifier. Sense amplifiers compare the capacitor voltage to reference value to determine the logic 1 or logic 0. The readout from cell must be restored to complete the operation. Memory cell array. These single cells arrangement form the memory cell array structure. In this cell array, the cells are arranged in a row with bit line and column with word line. If the address is provided to identify the data storage, and the world line forms an electrical path allowing all the memory cells on that row to be activated at the same time for store or retrieve data. Data access is initiated with electrical signals in a row address strobe and a column address strobe that together to point a cell's location within an array. For example, we want this cell data. The address is raised and word line create a path to this cell. Now the bit line retrieve data from this cell. Memory classification. In memory classification, there are two classes of memory. One is primary, it is main memory and stores data temporarily. Another one is secondary data storage, which provides long-term storage and it is external memory and saves data permanently. For primary memory, it is based on how data is stored. Data storing is volatile or non-volatile. Volatile type of memory loses all of its data when the power source is turned off. Non-volatile type of memory will retain all the data when it loses its power source. In primary, speed is critical because it holds the data currently being used and changed. For example, you playing a video game on your device. When you receive an important email from your office, then you pause the video game and move to email application, where the game is stored in an active time for you to access again. Your cache subset of main memories are important to highest speed requirement as it stores instructions awaiting execution. Here primary memories data stored is volatile or non-volatile. For volatile, which means that the data stored in it is lost when the power is turned off. This is why it is important to save your work regularly when you are using a computer. It is random access memory. It has two types. One is dynamic DRAM, another one static SRAM. The most common type of computer memory is dynamic random access memory. DRAM is made up of millions of tiny memory cells, each of which contains a transistor and a capacitor. The capacitor stores the electrical charge that represents the bit of data. The transistor acts as a switch that allows the computer to read or write data to the memory cell. To read data from a DRAM cell, the computer sends a signal to the transistor, which turns it on. This allows the electrical charge in the capacitor to flow through the transistor and be detected by the computer. To write data to a DRAM cell, the computer sends a signal to the transistor, which turns it off. This traps the electrical charge in the capacitor, which sets the bit of data to zero or one. 
Static Random Access Memory SRAM is a faster type of memory than DRAM, but it is also more expensive. In Static RAM, the memory cell is implemented using the two inverters that are cross-connected to form a latch and this latch in turn is connected to two bit lines which are connected to two transistors. Here the transistors act as a switch that can be closed and opened under the control of the word line. The transistors of a memory cell are switched on to perform the read and write operation on that particular memory cell. SRAM is used for small amounts of memory such as the cache memory in a computer's processor. Cache memory is a special type of high-speed memory that is used to store frequently used data and instructions for faster access by the processor. It acts as a buffer between the processor and the main memory. For non-volatile, it is read-only memory. ROM is a type of memory that is programmed once and cannot be changed. It only be read, not written to. The ROM are masked read-only memory, programmable read-only memory, erasable and programmable read-only memory, electrically erasable and programmable read-only memory, In masked read-only memory. The very first ROMs were hardwired devices that contained a pre-programmed set of data or instructions. It means, this device programmed by the manufacturer of these memories. It cannot reprogrammable. These kind of ROMs are known as masked ROMs. It is inexpensive ROM. The PROM is read-only memory that can be modified only once by a user. The user buys a blank PROM and enters the desired contents using a PROM programmer. Inside the PROM chip, there are small fuses which are burnt open during programming. It can be programmed only once and is not erasable. The erasable and programmable read-only memory can be erased by exposing it to ultraviolet light for a duration of up to 40 minutes. Usually, a EPROM eraser achieves this function. During programming, an electrical charge is trapped in an insulated gate region. The charge is retained for more than 10 years because the charge has no leakage path. It needs special device called a PROM programmer or PROM burner to reprogram the EPROM. The EPROM is programmed and erased electrically. It can be erased and reprogrammed about 10,000 times. Both erasing and programming take about 4 to 10 milliseconds. In EPROM, any location can be selectively erased and programmed. EPROMs can be erased one byte at a time, rather than erasing the entire chip. Hence, the process of reprogramming is flexible but slow. Secondary storage. In this, it is a long time data memory. Where data like photos and documents are kept, data integrity and storage longevity are far more important than speed. Today, lot storage device used to store large volume of data in long time, like gigabyte and megabytes. Secondary memories are also non-volatile memories because they keep data when lost the power. They are classified based on how data accessed. It is sequential or direct. Sequential access are magnetic storage and optical storage. Magnetic storage uses the two types of magnetic polarities to represent the binary information consisting of zeros and ones. They are hard disk and floppy disk. Optical disks rely on a red or blue laser to record and read data. They are compact disk read-only memory, digital versatile disk read-only memory, Blu-ray, high-density DVD, DVD random access memory, CD recordable and DVD recordable, CD rewritable and DVD rewritable. Direct access have electric storages. Electronic storage device used to store electronic, digital data or information. These are portable storage drives, memory card chips, pen drive, flash memory. Flash memory means that it can retain data even when the power is turned off. Flash memory is used in storage devices such as USB drives and solid state drives. Memory storage is a complex topic, but the basic principle is that data is stored as a series of electrical charges. 
The type of memory used determines how quickly data can be accessed and how long it can be retained without power. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our channel and like this video for more content.